All right. Well, hi, everyone. Happy Friday. My name is Kyle Rausch. I serve as the executive director of the study abroad office at UIC, and I have the honor of partnering with Dr. Shokafar, who is in the College of Engineering, to put together what is the first study abroad program for the College of Engineering. So we both are incredibly excited to present this program to you today. Uh, the program is called Biomaterials in Barcelona. So Dr. Shokafar and I are gonna trade off. We'll both be presenting some information about this program and we just thank you for taking time today to, to learn about it. So with that, um, I will walk us through what we'll be covering today. So we'll start with some introductions so you can get to know Dr. Shokafar and then um, we'll discuss what a faculty directed program is and, and what are some of the benefits. And then we'll go into detail about the course that you'll be taking with the program, some information about Barcelona, where the program is based. We'll talk about some highlights of the itinerary that we'll be doing. And then we'll end um, de detailing the cost and more importantly, some funding resources that are available to you to help afford the program. And then we'll close with how you can apply if you're interested. But I'd like to turn it over to my colleague so she can introduce herself and share a little bit about why she decided to create the Biomaterials in Barcelona program. So Dr. Shilkabar, take it away. Oh, I'm sorry, you're muted. Mm, is it working now? Yep, yeah, we can hear you. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm associate professor at bioengineering in University of Illinois, of course, at UIC. Um, and I've been very much involved in the field of biomaterials and nanomaterials in uh, many years. That's my PhD also. And I've been teaching 460, which is three credit undergrad and four credit grad student. And I have received the National Science Foundation Career Award uh, related to biomaterial and it's from the biomaterial NSF program. Uh, then uh, my motivation for introducing this first uh, uh, faculty directed College of Engineering study abroad program was initially based on my own experience. Uh, I have experienced a lot of benefits in, within the multicultural uh, education environment where um, I uh, got my undergrad uh, uh, in Iran and then uh, in the field of material science and engineering. Then I moved to Portugal, University of Aveiro, where I started my uh, master's and degree in material science and engineering. But then um, I uh, moved and transferred to US in Michigan Tech University. Uh, at the Department of Mechanical Engineering, where I got my PhD in Mechanical Engineering, where at that point, uh, I was involved in biomechanics research, orthopedic implants and dental implants, and I got very excited about the um, field of biomedical engineering, and that's why I became a faculty in this department. But um, I be believe that that multi cultural background uh, always excited me and got me into uh, the opportunity of career that I'm uh, right now at. And there's, that's why when I saw that uh, in engineering uh, field, really the idea of study abroad is not well established, rather in other departments, such as departments of nursing and you know, medical, uh, field and languages and stuff, uh, it's well established and a lot of faculties and students are doing it. So I thought, why not bioengineering and why not to introduce uh, bioengineering, sorry, in general engineering, why not to uh, get give the opportunity for engineering students to, to do the same and really gain the experience that I did. So that motivated me. Uh, so I really wanted to help uh, engineering students uh, to really get the opportunity to experience not only the coursework and the materials that are presented within the course to increase their knowledge for application of different fields of engineering uh, 
in a, you know in the biomedical field but also get them involved in the cultural experiences and all the fun stuff that Barcelona can offer. And I chose Barcelona specifically because it's a well-known European uh, country, not only for its architecture and art and culture, but also has a lot of opportunities to pursue biomedical careers. And there are a lot of biomedical institutes there that it's worth approaching and um, getting involved with collaborate with or even you know do become uh you know having your trajectory of career in that field in this thing thanks so much for that introduction and then just because we're a small group we'd love to get to know um a little bit about you all if you are able to uh please you could unmute and introduce yourself by name and what your specific major is and maybe share why you're interested in this program uh if you're not able to unmute don't worry you can just put a few words of introduction in the chat so i'll start with uh yusra are you able to speak Oh, okay. No worries. You're welcome to say a few words in the chat. We'll try Nancy. Oh, yes. Hi. So my name is Nancy and I, have, uh, I am a biomedical um, engineering student in my third year. So once I got the, this email from the study abroad office, I was so excited to hear that there is uh, some material has to be uh, teach in Barcelona. So I was really excited to apply for this program and join the Zoom meeting to know much about it because I have also a couple of questions, but hopefully I will get all the answers from this meeting. Perfect. Well, thanks for being here and I hope we'll answer your questions, but we'll also have plenty of time at the end for questions. Okay, you. Nice to meet you. And then lastly, Reina. Hi, my name is Brenda Martin. I am mechanical engineering and I graduate May 2025. And I was really just interested in this because I haven't seen any study abroad opportunities for engineering students. So I thought even though it's a BME, I thought I would learn a little more about it. Perfect. And I'm sure a little bit later when Professor Shokufar talks about the course, she can explain um, how this program is open to all engineering students and how even though it's focused on biomedical engineering and biomaterials, the relevancy to the other de departments of engineering. Um, so thanks, great to have you right now. And then I see Yusra, you introduce yourself in the chat. So you've changed your major from biology to biomedical engineering. And I thought this would be a good opportunity and you're a freshman with software standing and so fantastic. I, I already love seeing the breadth of experience that you three have and I'm sure we'll enroll uh, a similarly diverse cohort. So thanks for taking time to introduce yourselves. Let's move on. All right, so I'm gonna start just by quickly explaining what kind of study abroad program this is because we have different models of study abroad at UIC. So this is what we call a faculty directed program. And this means that this is a program developed by a UIC faculty member and it will be open to UIC students. So you'll actually be traveling as a class with other students. We hope to have a group of about 10 to 15 students so if you have any friends who might be interested, definitely make sure you send them this information. And some benefits of faculty-directed programs are listed here. So one, we talk about engagement. You have an incredible opportunity to build a relationship with an esteemed faculty member like Dr. Shokufor outside of the traditional classroom setting. So on a study abroad program, you'll find yourselves having meals with your professor. You'll be doing awesome cultural tours and visits, doing company visits, and that is providing you a lot more time to learn about the experiences of your professor, but also talk about things about career paths and interests you have or opportunities for graduate school. And if you do a good job in the program, that I'm sure uh, Professor Shokufar would be open to considering writing a letter of recommendation at some point for graduate school applications because she'll have a really good understanding of, of the skills you have from being on this program. Uh, next, faculty-directed programs tend to be shorter and easier to fit in y'all's busy schedules. I know students are incredibly busy with courses and homework and sometimes jobs and so forth. So the fact that this is um, a short summer program, I believe it's uh, three weeks, 
uh, hopefully makes it easier to fit in. And then of course cost, because it is a shorter time frame, it, it usually is cheaper than the semester or year long programs. Uh, next, these programs are great, especially if you haven't maybe traveled abroad a lot, maybe it's your first time going abroad because you'll have a high level of support. So Dr. Shokufar mentioned she has a lot of experience traveling abroad and, and working in international contexts. So you'll be able to benefit from some tips that she has. But we're also working with an experienced on-site partner called Barcelona SAE, and they have a full team of professionals who welcome the young American college students to Barcelona every semester. So you'll have their full support as well. And then lastly, I know sometimes, especially with engineering students, you, you, you think you can't study abroad because it, it doesn't fit with your major. So that's exactly why we've created this program. So that way you'll earn UIC credit that counts towards your degree plan. And we'll talk a little bit more about that soon. And then I'm just gonna quickly talk a little bit more about benefits of study abroad. So I like to break these into three categories. So first would be professional benefits. So you can learn about different perspectives about the biomaterials and biomedical industries from your Spanish counterparts. You know, every country and culture approaches problem solving differently. So you'll, you'll walk away with some new lenses you can use in your own research and work when you come back. Uh, another part of this program is we are planning industry visits, so you'll have the opportunity to connect with professionals and researchers who are doing the careers that you likely would like to do one day, so you'll, you'll get an early start on cultivating those professional networks. And then this idea of transferable skills. So although in your engineering coursework, you're learning all of the technical things that are important for the work you'll be doing, there are also many important skills such as communication, leadership, uh, comfort with ambiguity and so forth that regardless of industry is important for graduates to have and study abroad can be a really good vehicle for helping you develop those. In terms of the academic benefits, there are many, but um, very logistically speaking, you will earn five UIC credits in a three-week summer program. So that is a really great value for you to do something pretty cool with your summer and walk away with five credits. Uh, but you'll also be exposed to labs in Barcelona for some of the places you'll be visiting. So you'll learn about new approaches to research in, in these fields. And then finally, study abroad brings a lot of personal benefits. So leadership skills, uh, students often report that they feel more self-confident because they've navigated now a, a whole new country and culture, uh, oftentimes the first time by themselves. And then increasing your cultural competencies. So what do I mean by that? This is the idea that um, as we grow in life and have experiences and meet people from different backgrounds, it's our ability to bridge those differences and still collaborate and work with others. So this is a, a really important life skill to have both personally and, and professionally. So those are some of my thoughts about why study abroad is beneficial. So I'm gonna turn it over to Professor Shokafar now and she'll talk a little bit about the actual course and what you can expect from uh, the academic content of the program. Um, so, yes, thank you so much, Kyle, for uh, giving some introduction about the, you know, what uh, would be the uh, perspective of this uh, study abroad program. As far as the description and uh, learning material, so as the name applies, this is uh, a course uh, in the biomaterial topic. Um, and biomaterials are basically everywhere around us and we definitely need to, at some point, get engaged or apply them uh, or have people around us, uh, friends and families that may require uh, having them. Uh, what we really know about biomaterials in general, if we want to term it, is uh, in a material that, as I said, any type of material around us that is compatible with, uh, with our body and could be in direct contact with the human body, either to replace a tissue or regenerate a tissue that has any deficiency or is missing in, in human body. And you know, 
There uh, are several types of uh, materials. They can be in the uh, staying in the body or um, dissolving or biodegrading. And one of the famous ones that I'm sure you're familiar with is dental implants. So just an example. So this is an introduction about uh, biomaterials. But what we will be focusing on in this study abroad program is not only the lectures and academic aspects of the field of biomaterials, but as I mentioned earlier, that Spain is one of the leading uh, European countries that has focused on the biomedical field. We will let's see uh, and visit a lot of um, uh, companies and uh, universities that do uh, biomaterial research in the field. We also will get engaged and learn about uh, culture and we will have famous cultural visit, uh, especially Gaudi uh, architectures. You I'm sure you're familiar with and have seen a lot of pictures. This is Parc de Gaulle you see here, and then you probably are familiar with the most famous cathedral, which is Fam Sagrada Familia, yeah. Um, so uh, for this course, I think it's a great opportunity for your for you guys because you will earn five credits, uh, that could be counted toward your, uh, you know, anyway toward your graduation. Um, it since it give, gives you also the opportunity to to do these cultural visits and go to Spain and have fun, but also take a course of five credits and then uh you know uh, do this within the uh, four period the four week period. So I think it's very exciting. And later on, maybe Kyle can explain one of the you know the concerns might be the expenses. Uh, but we will point out that not only it's not, uh, you know, um, impossible to to uh, work it out because sometimes it will cost less than um, you know, engaging or, or having a one semester. So, uh, it might cost. It might not cost. It, it would not cost actually more. But even it might cost less because there is a lot of a scholarship or funding opportunities that you guys can apply, and then it might cost you even nothing. So, and all the costs will be covering everything: your food, housing, uh, you know, everything. Um, beside like um, the the air, flights and stuff. But I, I I think Kyle can explain this more detail. Thank so, you. Yeah. So, um, and just as you see on this slide here, it's important to call out. So because we want to make sure that every student has a baseline level of information before you arrive in Spain, we do plan to have four class sessions before the group leaves to Spain. So these will likely occur after the spring semester ends in May before the program starts in June. And then you start to answer your question. Uh, no, I don't believe there are any course prerequisites for this course. Is that correct? Uh, Tulu? What was the question again? Are there any course prerequisites? In no, 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 no course prerequisites, but of course, you know, you need to have a kind of an idea like about biomaterials, but how, like not necessarily taking a course on biomaterials, but basics, whatever you have learned in chemistry and stuff um, in high school should be enough because uh, it would be more application uh, of our materials and the visits that we will go, for example, to the research part would give you also a good understanding, uh, but it's really applied. And you, I think more of the prerequisites you need to be in good standings because, you know, um, you need to understand the concepts even if you don't have the prerequisites. Perfect, yep, and that's why this program is only open to students in the College of Engineering, as well as we're, we're considering students from physics, chemistry, and I think biological sciences too. Mm -hmm. Yes. Perfect, so that, that thought being you, if you're one of those majors, you have a strong enough backing in, in science to, to be able to follow the, the course. 
Um, so next question related to the academics is can you be a freshman and still participate? So yes, as long as you've completed one semester at UIC, you are eligible to participate. So absolutely, good questions. All right, we're gonna keep moving along, but you can, you're welcome to keep putting questions in the chat. So where are we going? Well, Barcelona is one of those cities that I think kind of speaks for itself. I think for people who think about Spain, it's often a city that uh, immediately comes up. But if you don't know much about it, it is um, one of the larger cities in the north of Spain in a region called Catalonia. And you might, if you follow the news, um, recognize that name Catalonia because the past several years, there has been a lot of discourse and political activity around this notion of what it means to be a Spaniard versus what it means to be Catalonian. So there is a very rich and strong cultural history in this region of, of Spain. Um, in fact, they have their own language uh, in this region and they are very proud of that. So it is a really interesting opportunity from a cultural lens to see how citizens of Spain negotiate this desire for a region of their country to, to have this strong independence of sorts. Um, you see some other information here. So it's also a really culturally rich uh, city because I believe it was in 1992, the uh, Olympics were held in Barcelona. And since that time, there's been a strong push to position Barcelona as a center of culture, art, history, and now science. So as Dr. Shokufar mentioned, there have been a lot of government pushes to expand the sciences in Spain and in particular in Barcelona, which is why it's become really a mecca of sorts of these research institutes, which you're gonna have the opportunity to visit. Um, I'd be remiss though, if I didn't mention Barcelona's architecture. So just as Chicago is known for its architecture, so too is Barcelona. And that's thanks in large part to a famous architect called Gaudi, Antonio Gaudi. And if you go to Barcelona, you will see many of his works and I'm not gonna give them away yet because we'll be talking about them in some of the highlights, but um, they are, are incredible. I've been fortunate to travel to Barcelona as well. And, and this um, some of the, the things he's created are just, very amazing to see in person. Um, Dr. Shokufar, I know you have traveled to Barcelona. Is there anything else you would like to add? Well, it was an amazing experience for me. I traveled there to, as a site visit, to make sure that, you know, everything is in place, how the housings are, how the classroom are, and, uh, you know, how the food is even, and uh, the center, of study abroad uh, program in Barcelona, how really the, you know, approachable the people are, how do they care for the students? And if I feel comfortable having my students there and how it will be um, uh, beneficial for them uh, if they're, the centers that I plan to take them are, um, you know, are, will, will be interested to have visits from students and all that. But in addition to that, I was always, um, you know, interested in visiting Barcelona. I, I'm very interested in, you know, um, uh, architecture and, you know, restaurants and coffee shops, especially those who are in Europe and they date back to, you know, really old times. So when I went there, uh, I was fascinated by how amazing, you know, the center is that they take care of the students, how approachable it is, how clean it is, how modern it is. Um, the classrooms were really nice. Um, not to say anything bad about you, you know, we have pretty old buildings. Like my office looks like this. The It looks like, yeah, I don't know the windows are so tiny and it doesn't have any lights and the classrooms are usually dark but you know there was everything bright and new and they just renovated everything and you know very very nice and modern so I was like oh I love teaching in these classrooms and I I know that the students will love to come to this place and the people who take care of you are there and they just you know, made me feel keeps away you can go to their office and share anything 
with them and they'll take care of you, of course. And another thing was they say they have a lot of programs to engage you, like cooking class, Catalan Catalanian cooking classes, you know, a lot of site visits. They'll take you there, dinners and stuff like that. What place that I really like to go and there was fun things to do. It was a uh, Gothic quarter. Uh, I really love that area and I wanted to always go have dinner there. <laughs> um, and also uh, housing wise, I visited the places that students are going to stay. I would love it. The apartments were nice and the area was great. It just right in front of it was the metro station, train station. And when you walked out, there was all dining and, well, you know, shops and st stuff, but very traditional. So it was not that typical touristic environment, but really original Spanish uh, places to eat and, you know, places to buy stuff or take groceries and it's just a few minutes of the housing. So the housing was modern and the location was great and it was easy to commun commun commute to the classrooms and stuff. So I, I was very happy. The safety was great. There were availability from the program people there to really be available for anything for you guys. And there was a specific person which will give you their cell number and available for any safety concern or even some students were not, you know, having some too much nightlife and they would take care of them. So I, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that's not going to be our case, but you know, it happens. You guys are young and you're in Barcelona. So, so in every aspect, that's what I say that I was very fascinated during my site visit. Okay, do you guys have any questions? Let me check. Sorry about that. Okay, no problem. All right, thanks for sharing your thoughts on Barcelona. Um, I will move us forward. Oh, I just wanted to give a very short video preview because it's hard to describe a great city like Barcelona, but I found this video from our partner's website. So I'll just play about a minute of it. Let me um, make sure my audio is connected real quick. I think there's one question, Kyle. Oh, sorry. Let's see what that question is. Can you answer that? Um, yes, yeah, so if you have a friend or if you are graduating this semester, you can still participate. So there are two options. You could either um, work with your academic advisor to delay your graduation in UIC system to be after the program, but you still may be able to walk in the spring ceremony. So you could talk to your advisor about that. Or if you wanna just go and fully graduate, you could apply to the program as a non-degree student. So if your friend has questions, please feel free to have her get in touch. All right, so let's take a quick look at Hola. Barcelona. Barcelona is full of incredible landmarks and unique neighborhoods or barrios just waiting to be explored. Beautiful beaches, Gothic Quarter alleyways, bustling markets, and stunning Art Nouveau architecture are just some of the things you can expect to find in Barcelona. One of the best ways to explore a new city is by foot, or in this case, through a scavenger hunt. So today, I went to the museum with my friends and we started on a scavenger hunt. On a scavenger hunt, there were a few things that we had to do. The first thing that we had to do was find the Volca Verín. There you had to look up like a few words. You had to look up crab, watermelon, and sausages in Catalan. And that was pretty fun. So today what we did is we went around the Gothic Quarter and every, kind of everywhere else. And we did a lot of special tasks. All right, if you want to keep watching, these are all available on our partner's website, but I hope that gives you a little taste of, of what 
being in Barcelona is like. And I can't believe we forgot to mention you have a beach there too. So what better way to enjoy some summer time at the beach. Okay, so now um, Dr. Shokufar and I will just trade off each slide. We just, we're not gonna go through the full itinerary because there's so much packed in, but we wanted to give you a sense of some of the activities that you'll be doing. So um, maybe uh, Dr. Shokufar, if you wanna start, if you know, I, I did put some information about these two centers. I'm not sure if you were able to visit either or if you know a little bit more that you wanna share about either of these two. Yeah, actually, I did visit both of them. And again, I was very excited to see the type of research that was done there. It's a very big center, actually, the Barcelona Biomedical Research Park. You can see how, you know, great modern building, but also Institute for Research in Biomedicine, which uh, actually does uh, not only fundamental research at the interface of molecular and cell, cell bioengineering. So biology, it's really... Um, you know, toward bioengineering, but they also do computational and structural biology and chemistry. Um, so you will learn about, I mean, you will see people and scientists working in the area of proteomics, genomics, biostatics, and advanced digital microscopy. So there is a lot of areas that you can gain some knowledge uh, Hopefully they interest you. You can talk to the scientists and researchers working in that field. The Barcelona Biomedical Research Park is an amazing place. So you won't get to visit every uh, part of it in one day, but uh, some important parts we get to see. Uh, so it actually does have many research centers that are focused in that Barcelona research park. Uh, it was actually launched by the government of Catalonia, uh, the city council of Barcelona, and Campo Fabra University. Uh, it, as I said, it is one of the largest biomedical research clusters in Europe. So that's why I also said like Spain is a really good place to go and uh, gain a lot of uh, information in the biomaterial field, because one of the largest research cl institute and clusters is in Spain. And then um, next, uh, you will be visiting the Barcelona Institute of Global Health. And so you see this was another innovative alliance between some of the organizations within Spain, as well as academic institutions and government bodies. So I think one of the interesting things for your group to look at as you go on this program is really the collaboration and partnership between industry and government and public sector and how they're coming together to look at how biomaterials and biomedical engineering are important for the growth of their society. Um, next, you see here a picture of the Autonomous University of Barcelona, and I'm really excited for you all to have this experience. We're trying to plan some engaging engagement activities with students if they'll still be around. Uh, this university is ranked as the number one university in Spain. They're similar size to us, so have about 40,000 students. And if you go on their website, you'll see dozens of programs related to biosciences and engineering. So our hope is that you'll, you'll get to hear from some of their faculty and students during that visit. Okay. Um, Dr. Shokufar, I think you had the opportunity to visit both of these wonderful places, as have I, but I'll let you start with uh, some reflections you might have. Yeah, so Parkwell is one of the famous places where uh, uh, was architecture by Gaudi, and it was amazing. It was like a fairy tale. And it's like, you know, it's not just one house or one building, rather it's a big, big, big park, which everywhere you go, you can see all this fairy tale uh, looking uh, architecture. I really enjoyed it. It did have an amazing view of Barcelona, but when I was, you know, touring all around, I loved the whole environment and the sense and feeling I would get in that park. Um, and what you know that anything that is UNESCO World Heritage Site is something you really want to go visit. <laughs> um, also, La Sagrada Familia, uh, it's considered actually Gaudi, Gaudi's masterpiece. And then whenever you see 
um, you know, a highlight of, of Barcelona, they have this picture uh, of Sagrada Familia. And interestingly, it has been under construction for like more than 200 years, around 200 years. And some years ago, it went on fire. So it was burning, but it took some time to rebuild it. And now they're still building it because they not not finished. Uh, it's so huge, so big. But when you go inside, you're fascinated by how the inside is, is made. And it doesn't look like a traditional uh, uh, church or to the traditional uh, place uh, that you usually see. Um, uh, it, I was looking for the word of uh, the cathedral, cathedral. So it's not the usual cathedral that you see. It does have Gothic and uh, Art Nova uh, architecture that forms, uh, which makes it the most unique and creative cathedral in the world. Uh, so they're expecting that it might be finished by 2040. So we'd be very old, I think. <laughs> might be able to see it, but I don't know. <laughs> so this but, is a great opportunity for you to go see it as it's still being constructed. And I have to say, I've been very fortunate to have traveled a lot of places, but this remains one of the top things I've ever been able to see. I mean, pictures, when you go inside, don't do it justice. It, talk about a fairy tale. You are transported into another world, so really incredible and I think from an engineering perspective I, I would imagine it will be interesting for you all as young students to look at this from an engineering point of view how they've managed to create something like this. All right so that's just a few highlights um, there are many more things including a couple of day trips we've got planned to other parts of Spain um, but real quick just to talk about housing so as already mentioned uh, the plan is for students to be in shared housing and apartments or apartment style hotels, which will have access to kitchens. So the kitchens will be stocked with your pots and pans and dishes, everything you need. So that way, if you want to cook, um, you can save some money that way. Um, Wi-Fi will be included and of course, bed bugs. So a little photo of, of a typical Spanish apartment that they tend to place students in. Okay, so I know cost is always a big concern for students, so we'll spend the next few minutes talking about cost and funding resources. So we worked really hard with our partner to try and keep this fee as low as possible. And um, so the program fee is just under 5,000, so 49.85. And I know for students that that probably does look like a high number, but you really need to make sure you understand what it includes. So as you see here, it includes your five UIC credit hours. And if you look at that note I added on the bottom, I did the math. If you took summer classes at UIC, you would be charged about $3,600 just for the classes. So you see for really just a couple thousand more, you could have a study abroad experience. So other things that are included in the program fee beyond tuition is your housing for the three weeks, your transportation for the program excursions, uh, you will be getting an unlimited metro pass, so you'll be able to travel all throughout Barcelona as much as you want during your free time, and then international health insurance as well. And then all the activities that we've built in, all the things we just talked about plus more, will be covered as well. The only things that aren't included are airfare. I'll say a little bit more about that in a second. So airfare, passport. Um, if you don't have your passport, please apply for it ASAP because processing times are quite long. So if you think you might be interested in this program, just go apply for your passport. Um, visa, so right now US citizens do not need a visa to travel to Spain. Uh, if you're a non-US citizen, you may need a visa and I can help you look into that. Um, most meals will be on your own. We will have a couple of group meals included, but you'll need a budget for most of your food. And then, of course, I know students love shopping when they go to Europe, so any money that you might want for personal spending would be on your own. So that's a little bit about the cost of the program. Now let's talk about all the resources that are out there to help you fund it. 
So the program, uh, all of our programs have a web page, and if there's time, I'll, I'll jump on it and show you it. But on the web page is something called a cost sheet, and that cost sheet breaks down the program fee for you, and it also gives you estimates for like a plane ticket and food expenses, so you can have an overall picture of what this would cost. The other thing about the cost sheet is you can print or save it as a PDF and then email it to the financial aid office and they can let you know if you have financial aid that will help you pay for the study abroad program. Beyond um, financial aid though, there are many scholarships for study abroad and my office has some. The deadline is coming up soon though, so I, I believe it's um, in the next, first couple weeks of February, so don't delay on that. Um, certain UIC departments have scholarships. So if you're an honors college student, for in instance, you, you have access to scholarships. Um, I do believe I saw someone say biological sciences and I know the College of LAS has study abroad scholarships. So you can ask your advisor if they have any. But for this group, I really wanna highlight the nationally competitive scholarships because STEM majors, so science, technology, engineering, and math majors are probably the most competitive applicants for study abroad scholarships. And why is that? Because the field of study abroad wants more STEM majors to study abroad. And so the fact that you are a STEM student going on a STEM focused program will make you extremely competitive. So I hope what you're hearing me say is if you want to do this program, you should apply for every scholarship out there because you'll have a very strong chance of getting it. And there's one in particular we'll talk about on the next slide. Um, in case you look at some of our other programs, it's worth pointing out that um, we do have another model of programs called partnership programs. And so our partners offer discounts for our students on those. And then we talk to students about community-based funding. So this program doesn't go till June. So you have between now and June where you can be working to raise some money. And on our website, we have some uh, a short packet that gives you ideas such as starting a crowdsource funding campaign online, and other fundraising methods. So one of the most important scholarships we promote is the Gilman International Scholarship. So this is for any student who receives a Pell Grant. So if you receive a Pell Grant, you can apply for this. There's also something called the Gilman McCain Scholarship. And so if you are a child dependent of an active duty military service member, you can apply for that one. Um, the awards are up to $5,000, and then the deadline isn't till March 10th, so you still have plenty of time. And our students have been very successful in earning the Gilman. And like I said, um, STEM majors are, are even more competitive. I have read for Gilman before, so I know what they are looking for in the application. So please, if, if you get a Pell Grant, come talk to me. I'd love to help you on your application. Don't put this off though until March because um, I work with a lot of students. So if you wait till the last minute, I might not have enough time to help you. So try and get in touch sooner rather than later. And then another campaign I wanna highlight is we've launched our Bring a Fellow Flame campaign. So this is to encourage you to maybe you have a friend who you'd like to study abroad with or a classmate. If you encourage another UIC student to sign up for the program and you both get accepted and commit, you both will, we will waive our study abroad admin fee of $250 for you. So that's kind of a, an easy way to knock off 250 bucks for the program. So. Talk about it in your classes, see if you can get a friend to sign up and you can benefit from this campaign. All right, so hopefully we've answered some of your questions. If not, we're gonna have some time in a minute to take those, but I hope that you're interested. And if so, here are your next steps. So as I mentioned, make sure you apply for a passport. Uh, I recommend every student talk to their academic advisor about their study abroad plan so that way they can make note of it in your, your degree plan. And then um, the first step is actually watching our first step video. So there's a short video you'll be asked to watch when you click apply now that goes over some important um, administrative information about how to study abroad works at UIC. The application is done on our website and our Flames Abroad portal, and the deadline is coming up on February 26th. So you want to make sure you get your program application in by then. You're not required to meet with me, but I am happy to meet with anyone who'd like to, either in person or Zoom. So there's my email address if you'd like to make an appointment. And then, of course, start making.
making sure you are researching the scholarship and funding resources. All right, um, I'm gonna jump quickly onto the website just to show you uh, a little of the information we talked about and then we will take any questions. So here is the program's webpage. Um, the way you navigate it are these tabs. So you can click on these and it has a lot of the information we just covered. Um, the cost sheet is located on the finances tab. So you can come down here and you see it here. And then if you wanted to print it, you could click this icon, you can print or save as a PDF. And then this is how you can email that to the financial aid office, okay? If you're ready to apply for the program, you can come here and you would click apply now. You would input your UIC credentials and that will generate the first step application once you've watched that video, we'll then approve you to move on to the actual program application. The program application is not long. Uh, uh, you could probably fill it out in 20 or so minutes. It consists of forms we need you to read and electronically sign. And then we do ask for a short program interest statement. So it's just a chance for us to get to know you and why you're interested in the program. All right, well, that was a lot of information. So I'm gonna pause and then we're happy to take any questions. You can put those in the chat or you can unmute yourself. The same that was asked in the chat. So um, I have received an email that I can be, uh, I can graduate this spring because of I have completed the hours, not the major um, requirements, like the biomedical engineering. So um, am I still uh, be able to participate in the study abroad? Yes, you can. Um, I, I just recommend you talk to your academic advisor and let them know you're interested in this. And then, like I said, if, if you were able to declare your graduation at the end of the semester, uh, but you wanna participate on this, my recommendation would be just to have your advisor input into the UIC system that you're gonna wait till after you complete the study of program to formalize your graduation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So um, where, where I can like um, meet with the advisor or have mm. appointment with the advisor? Do you happen to know who your advisor is? If not, you can send me an email and I can look that up for you. Okay, it's just a college advisor? Correct. Yeah, I know, okay. Great. Uh, and also I have another question. So the five credit hours, it, um, it's, it counts toward my biomedical degree, like um, five hours for my major, not for the hours of the graduation. Good right. question. So just to clarify this, because it's very uh -huh. important. So you actually are going to be enrolled in two, two sections. So the first section will be for BME 494. This will be three credits that count toward the technical elective for engineering majors. The second course you're going to be registered in is BME 194. This will be two credits for general elective. So make sure when you talk to your advisor, you show them that information on the web page, but it counts as five credits total with three credits going towards your engineering technical elective and two credits going towards a general elective. Okay, got it. Great, no problem. Thanks for being here. If you have to go, that's fine, but we'll stay around in case there are any other questions. All right, Nancy, anything else uh, on your mind? No, thank you so much. I think, Nancy, I know you. Uh, yes. You, you've been in my 102, mm -hmm. month, right? Yeah. That's great. <laughs> You're interested in this course. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, it was nice to meet you, Nancy. And as you look at the application, if you have any questions <clears throat> or you need help looking at the funding resources, please feel free to contact me. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, have a good day. You too.